Welcome to Hacking Arcade ROMs, Lesson 1, Workstation Setup. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to install the necessary software to hack ROMs. That's going to be MAME, the multiple arcade machine emulator, a hex editor, in this case hex workshop, and the Python programming language. In this step, we will install MAME. You might be wondering, what exactly is MAME? MAME is the Multiple Arcade Machine Emulator. Basically, it's software that lets your PC pretend that it's the CPU architecture of one of the old arcade games. This is really, really useful because it simulates, it reads the real ROMs um, and simulates the hardware. So you can actually run the real code and it includes a debugger, which lets you actually step through the game code, see what's going on memory, change memory, do all kinds of crazy things. And it's really, really neat. So this is gonna really help you with your ROM hacking because you will be able to actually see the code, make changes to the code, and actually see how it would work on real hardware. Now, let's go ahead and open up our web browser. and we'll go to www.mamedev.org. Find the downloads link, click on latest release, and go ahead and download either the 32-bit version, which is the MAME and the number.exe, or the 64-bit version if you have a 64-bit computer, which you probably have, um, which is MAME version number 64-bit.exe. Save it to wherever. And once it's done downloading, we'll go ahead, double click on it. And that will start up the extractor. Now, you're gonna extract it to wherever you wanna extract it to. I'm going to extract it to the actual, um, I have a hard, a hard drive here called my E drive, which is a separate. So I'm going to just click on E and make new folder, name, click OK. You don't have to, if you don't have an E drive, you don't have to install it to E, you can just install it to C slash colon name, that would be fine. I'm going to do it to E just to make it clean. Um, just remember, wherever you would install it to, you're going to have to use that path, this is called a path, later on. So keep, keep in mind where you installed it to and remember that. Click Extract. It's done. So we can go ahead and close our web browser here. And I'm going to go ahead and delete the inst installer that we downloaded. Now let's open up a terminal or a command prompt. So go down to your near your run command to the, the bar here and just type CMD. Now I need to switch to the directory and the path where I installed MAME. Remember, I installed it on the E drive, so what I need to do to switch to the E drive is type E colon, and then I can type CD MAME. Okay. If you installed it on C drive, just type CD and whatever the path name was called that you installed it to. But I have it in, um, on my E drive and MAME, so I'm ready to go. Now I'm gonna type the command DIR, which just gives me a listing of what's in that directory. And you can see here, there's a bunch of files that it extracted. Okay. In this directory, e colon slash mame, is another directory called ROMs. This is where I'm gonna put my ROM files. Now, I can't show you how to get ROM files. You have to find them. Um, Google it, you'll find ROM files, whatever game you want. Um, I'm going to, in this example, move my Frogger ROM files into that folder and then extract them. It's important if you want to hack them that you extract them because it makes the ROM, individual ROM files accessible to you. 
So I'm going to go ahead and close this command prompt. And then I'm just going to type here, and I'm going to type uh, e colon to bring up my file explorer. And I'll go into MAME and ROMs. Now I'm going to go to where I have my Frogger file, which is on my computer somewhere. And I'm just going to drag it over here to ROMs. MAME can play these games and debug these games um, without extracting them. But if you want to actually edit them, you have to extract them to make it easy for you to edit them and see your changes. So this is a, a, called a 7-zip file. And I have the 7-zip um, decompressor on my system. Often you'll find them as zip files. And you can just right click on a zip file and click on zip. Um, in this case, I'm going to use 7-zip. Seven seven so I'm just going to do extract to Frogger. And it's done. Now, I want to, very important, I want to rename this file so that when I do start editing the files, um, MAME will not actually use the zip file, but it will actually look in the Frogger directory. And these are the actual different ROM files here. Um, in the case of Frogger, I'll show you later how to, how to figure this out. The actual game ROMs that we're going to edit are Frogger 26, Frogger 27, and FRSM 7 or 3.7. Again, I'll show you later on how to actually find out which are the ROM files that we need to edit. But that's for another lesson. So I'm going to go ahead and close this down. Now I'm going to go back down to my command prompt and type CMD to start it up. And again, just like before, I'm going to go to that MAME directory on my E drive. So I'm going to type E colon to move to my E drive. And then I'm going to type CD MAME, where my MAME software is. And again, I'm going to type DIR to show you the directory listing of the files that are in there. And you see here this MAME64.exe. This is the main MAME executable program that actually is the emulator that allows you to play games and um, in our case, we're going to use the debugger in the, inside the emulator that allows us to actually see what's going on and, and debug things and, and mess with memory and, and test out our ROMs. So the way you launch a MAME normally is just type MAME64. If you're using the 64-bit version, if you're using the 32-bit version, which I didn't download, it's just MAME. And then the name of the ROM that you want to play. And in our case, we want to actually launch the debugger also. So we're going to hit the extra option, debug. And now what you'll see is MAME has come up and it's actually frozen the program. And what we have here is the debugger. Now we're going to go into another episode in much more detail with the debugger. I just want to show you that it actually how to start it up and um, then how to launch the program. But before, I do want to show you one other cool thing. Um, again, we'll talk about how to use the debugger more later. But if you click on debug here and new memory window, this actually tells you what's going on in memory um, and lets you edit the memory if it's writable um, and see changes. Um, if we go up here, we're just going to actually go and switch to the video ROM section. So type OX8000. Well, that's a hex number. We'll talk about that in another episode. Um, but that's a hexadecimal number that says um, what memory location we want to start looking at. If I hit enter, you see it switches and it's all zeros. Now, um, this is just kind of neat to, to watch. When I hit start, which is F5, the game's going to start to run and you'll see this uh, highlighted line's going to change and start moving. And that actually th these memory locations are going to change as the game writes to actually, this is the video ROM, so it's going to write information to the video ROM and you'll see how it actually updates in this. So to start the game running, just click in your main um, debugger window here and then hit F5 to say start. And there you go. You can see that in the background the screen changing. You can see actually these numbers changing. And what actually that is, is the frogs. Isn't that cool? So um, that's all we're going to show you. I just want to show you how to start it up. We're going to look much more later at the actual debugger and how to use it. So go ahead and close it down. And then you can close down your command prompt. The next step, we're going to install a hex editor. In this case, Hex Workshop. Now, there are many hex editors you could use. 
In my examples, I use Hex Workshop. Now, Hex Workshop does cost, it's I think n about $90. However, they, you can also download it, and I believe it, you can use it for 30 days for free to try it out. See if you like it. Um, if you don't like it, or you don't want to pay the money, there are other free hex editors you can use. The important thing is you just have to get used to using a hex editor. So in my examples, I'm going to use Hex Workshop. So let's pull up our web browser and go to www.hexworkshop.com. Then we'll go ahead and to the products page and click on download now. Again, you can download for the Hex Workshop for I think 30 days before it, you had to pay for it. Okay, save it to your desktop or wherever. Just remember where you save it to. And once it's done installing, go ahead and double click on the software installer and go ahead and just install it. I've already installed it on my machine, so I'm not going to go through the process. Just follow the steps. When you're done, you can delete the installer. Once it's installed, let's just go ahead and make sure it actually shows up. Okay, good. Let's go ahead and close it. We'll actually deal with the Hex Workshop later. In this next step, we will download and install the Python programming language. You don't necessarily need this to hack ROMs, but it's very helpful to have a scripting language at your disposal for more advanced tasks. And some of the tools that I will use in the follow-up lessons will actually use Python scripts to do some work. So it's a good idea to go ahead and install it. So now let's pull up a web browser and go to www.python.org. Go ahead to the download section and choose on download Python. Use a 2.7 version. There'll also be a three version. Don't use a three version. Go ahead and save that to your desktop or wherever. And then when it's done, double click a little arrow in Firefox and run the installer. You can choose um, the default installation path that it provides you, unless you specifically want to put it somewhere else. But make sure to, when you go to the customize option that you choose this X'd out bo box that says add python.exe to path and go ahead and install that. You want to do that to make it easier for you to run scripts. And then it will go ahead and download and install. It'll just take a few minutes. Once it's done, go ahead and click Finish. And then pull up a command prompt after closing down your Firefox window. Go to your Start menu and pull up a command prompt. Once you have your command prompt open, we want to verify that the Python program actually is working. So just type Python and then hit enter. And you'll see that you have a little header that tells you you're running Python two point whatever. Go ahead and type quit. Oops, quit with two parentheses and then exit. Now you know your Python software is installed correctly.